All right, my friends, we are going to be talking about algae today and cleanup crews in your aquarium, specifically in your community aquarium and your planted aquarium. So I want to show you the truth of my aquariums, which before we start anything, I feel like you got to put your money where your mouth is. And when you get close to this tank, you can see that there actually is a bit of algae. Now, standing back, you don't see any algae whatsoever really but as we get close you can look at the plants and you can see that there are still some little bits of filamentous algae and that is something that fish can help us with siamese algae eaters uh, and a number of other fish including live bears will pick at that and eat that and then uh, other kinds of algae like blackbeard algae and things have never formed in this tank because of some of the creatures that are living back in this jungle but what i want to show you before we move on is that as nice as this tank may look to some folks, others might not think it looks that great, but as nice as it may look to some folks, there's actually a residue of very fine algae if we get it to focus on the glass. Right here, you can see that there is a spot algae or diatomaceous algae made up of a crystalline matrix of little algae cells living in a colony and we're going to talk today about how we can clean up that as well as the other kinds of algae and which fish are truly good at that versus which ones are just taking up space and might actually be detrimental to your community so if you like the look of this tank if this is clean enough for you i never scrape this tank and i never want to scrape this tank i am lazy in cleaning up tanks as far as that goes uh, same with this tank. If this is clean enough for you, then let's talk about what fish is the right one for you and what other little helpers such as nearite snails, ram's horn snails, shrimp, and other creatures you can use to have a tank that looks this clear all the time, even with medium to high light, versus maybe you want completely crystal clear glass that doesn't have any little residue of anything on it that's when you're probably going to need to get the scraper out or employ a army of nearite snails so let's take a look at these nearite snails first and then we'll move on to algae eaters autosynclus and things like whether plecos are worth using all right one of the big misconceptions is that fish like these uh, lovely and cistrus or plecos that they're going to keep the glass clean now there is some truth in that in that they will eat biofilm off of the glass and they'll eat a little bit of algae but what they will leave are these little dots of diatomaceous algae that are formed by matrices of crystals when you look at the microscopic level these little bits of algae can only really be gotten by preventing them from forming in the first place or by employing snails and shrimp now if you have some of the other algae eating creatures that we're going to talk about that are most popular like the siamese algae eater they're going to go for your shrimp as a meal as well so that doesn't work out so well in tanks where you're going to employ them as your main algae control so let's talk about what we can do about cleaning this really hard to get stuff off the glass these last little bits let's just cover that first and then we'll talk about overall algae control so the only thing that you're going to get that's going to actually get the diatomaceous algae or that really hard to get powdered algae off your glass is going to be nearite snails and a handful of other kind of more exotic snails that we're not going to get into in this video but nearite snails come in a wide wide variety of different types and as you can see here this one he's got a little blade in his mouth and basically those little blades or teeth can eat any little bits of algae that are on the glass now malaysian trumpet snails like this one here and ram's horn snails like this one over here they can also eat algae and clean up the glass but they don't have really hard beaks or the ability to uh, really scratch into 
almost rock hard or mineral hard deposits. And so you get left with spots like over here. And that's where we need these specific nearite snails. And I recommend everything from red racers to, you know, cappuccino or devil spike snails. They work well. But they only really are going to work on the hard surfaces. And one major downside to some of the larger nearite snails is that they will lay these white eggs on just about any organic surface and sometimes even non-organic surfaces like back in the corner over in the tank over there they'll lay those and that can be an eyesore to a lot of people so what do I recommend to get around that well there's actually a species of nearite that is small and it's called the zebra nearite or thorned uh, nearite and those will not lay nearly as many of the little eggs and when they do, they're very small and they will dissolve in your water if it is all acidic. So if it's even 6.8, eventually those will just fall away, fall apart. Now, to keep your glass clean, uh, you can also just resort to using a dimmer light and having less nitrates in the water, less phosphates in the water, so that your algae never grows. So that's one option, but I have whole other videos on that. Let's pretend like you're putting fertilizers in the tank, you have a planted tank, and you want plants to grow, and you don't want a million snails. So what do you do to get a tank like this? Well, this is where your algae-eating crews can really come in handy. Now, obviously, a lot of fish eat things other than what's strictly listed in their diet regimen when you read up on them. For instance, little live bears, guppies, mollies, platies, they will go ahead and they will eat at just about any little tuft of algae. And they're trying to eat a lot of the little mini uh, microorganisms, mini crustaceans that live in that algae or on that biofilm that give them protein, nutrients, and some of the uh, dietary needs that aren't fulfilled just by flake foods and things. And that's great. That's great that they do that. However, if you need a tougher cleaning of plants and of hardscape because you have a buildup of algae, something like this point where you have algae growing on surfaces or maybe you have algae growing completely out of control. You have blackbeard algae growing all over the place, maybe on your filter inflows and outflows. That's when you want to employ some of the fish that are evolutionarily designed to eat algae for us. So if we wanted to clean these off, these hard, tough algaes like green hair algae, which is seen here, or like black beard algae, some of the red and brown algaes can also be really tough sometimes. That's when you want to get something like a Siamese algae eater or one of its variants. Now what I want you to notice about this tank is that even though I have quite a few snails in this tank and there's no fish in this tank, it's just waiting for new fish in, at the moment and needs a thorough cleaning obviously. Uh, this tank here still has black beard algae and it still has green hair algae. So those snails are not eating that kind of algae or this kind of algae, this filamentous algae up here. So what do we do about that kind of algae? Let's talk about that right now. Alright, so first off you have the classic Siamese algae eater. It is a fish from Southeast Asia that lives in tropical waters. You can keep it as low as around 68 or 70 degrees if need be, but it's going to have a much slower metabolism and eat a lot less algae at those temperatures, as well as being more prone to ick and other illnesses. So keeping it at around 74 is optimal, 76 ideal, uh, and anything hotter than about 82, it starts to run into problems as well, such as kidney function and uh, its ability to uh, get enough oxygen in the water it can become an issue as well. So keep it at that 74 to uh, to around 80 or 82 range and it can live in a pH of 6.0 all the way up to around 8.0. They're not fussy fish in that regard and some people keep them even beyond those parameters. 
Now, the tricky part is when you go to buy this fish, you're looking for a Siamese algae eater that has a black line across its body and no other coloration in the fins or lining it around that black line. You're looking for the classic Siamese algae eater. I'm gonna put the Latin name on the screen here too. Now, oftentimes these fish get sold with Chinese flying foxes, which are a very similar looking fish when they're young, but they start to look pretty different as they get older. When they're young, you can spot the difference by looking at the stripe down the side, as well as the pointiness of the head. When they're really young, flying foxes tend to still have a pointier head, less rounded off head, and they have a golden color over that black line that runs down the body. Sometimes some of the species even have a uh, black coloration on the top of the fish. So it looks like they have two black lines and kind of two silver, like a silver belly and then silver or copper colored line in between. Those are easier to spot. Now, there are also a number of Siamese algae eaters that are on the market and sold as Siamese algae eaters. There's the oblong one, that's uh, Latin name is oblongatus, and then there's also the reticulatus that are in the hobby. Now the reticulatus is actually my very favorite algae eater. It is going to still grow to around five to six inches long, like any uh, Siamese algae eater that you get, but it is far more uh, interested in eating <clears throat> blackbeard algae and hair algae as it gets older. All these little fish will eat that algae when they're young. They'll eat, like I said, up to half their body weight a day in it. So if they run out of that food, you need to supplement it with uh, spirulina wafers or some sort of supplemental food that's uh, vegetation based and that will stop them from becoming malnourished or stunted or ill. Then if you're looking at that tank, the way to spot a reticulated Siamese algae eater, which in my mind are a little more peaceful and tend to grow a little less quickly uh, than the traditional Siamese algae eater, the way to spot them is they have a black diamond on their tail. They may have a little bit of yellow or kind of like off green color in their fins that's translucent, but they're gonna have an all silver body and that black diamond on the tail, no stripe down the side. And once they reach a few months old, they'll start to grow two barbels that are pretty prominent, as well as these little nose flaps that are fairly prominent if you look closely. Those are excellent fish as long as you have a plan for where to put them. Uh, they are social fish in the wild, but you can have just one in your tank, and I use just one oftentimes. But if you use two or three of any of the Siamese algae eaters, they tend to kind of get a bit aggressive and kind of uh, nip at one another. They don't bug the other species very often, but they may bug one another. And so whether it's the classic Siamese algae eater, the oblongatus, or the reticulatus, um, they're all a great choice. And I think that the reticulatus or the diamond-tailed algae eater, sometimes annoyingly called the silver fox or the silver-tailed fox or silver Siamese algae eater, has several names. Um, it can be deceiving because the next two we're going to talk about, the flying fox and the Chinese algae eater, they are very different. The Chinese algae eater can get to a foot long and it is more aggressive, plus it's going to stop eating algae at a certain point. Now, the way to spot those is they have a completely different mouth. They have a sucker-shaped uh, mouth or lips evolved, and that's to hold on to fast current water. So they only live in fast current rivers and things, whereas your Siamese algae eaters, uh, the reticulatus or the, uh, the typical kind or the oblong kind, they're both going to go in and out of different types of water, flooded forests, rivers, creeks, streams, and into rapid water as well. 
But the Chinese algae eater is going to have a mouth to hold onto rocks. And basically in between that, it's going to forage for small crustaceans, shrimp, and uh, little creatures, uh, scuds and amphipods. So it's wanting protein as it gets older. And it's going to be less interested in eating the algae off your plants. Not to mention, it will start to actually munch on your tender plants if you have any uh, new buds that are sprouting, it may just go ahead and eat those with the algae. So between that and its temperament of not getting along with its fellow species uh, in tanks because there's just not enough room generally, uh, makes it ill-equipped for most tanks. I would avoid the Chinese algae eater and I would avoid the Chinese flying fox or sometimes just called the flying fox for the reason that it's going to get to that same six to seven inch size as the Siamese algae eaters, but it's going to be far more aggressive and it, it will pick on other fish outside of its species. And yet again, as it gets older, uh, or if the temperature is on the lower end around 70 to 74, it no longer wants to eat algae. It starts eating protein. And as it gets older, it starts eating protein anyways. Uh, and that's when it can eat things like eggs of your other fish uh, or babies of your other fish and will devour anything resembling a shrimp that's in your tank. So I think the reticulated algae eater followed by the classic algae eater uh, or Siamese algae eater are going to be your best bets if you have a tank that's 20 gallons or more. Start with one. If you have a tank that's 40 gallons or more, you can use four or five of them in your tank easily, but they're going to grow to a good size and you need to have a plan of what to do with six inch long fish in two to three years. Uh, so try talking to your local store and seeing if they'll let you bring them back uh, or if maybe somebody you know wants some algae eating fish for their large 120 gallon or 150 gallon community tank. And that's what fish clubs are great for. Now, if you guys have any other tips or advice for uh, what to use in your aquarium to manage algae, other than what we've talked about uh, as far as cleanup crew, I'd love to hear about it. Or if you have any other pitfalls of fish you've bought that were you know, uh, listed as something else, then please let me know. Um, but hopefully this covers the most common issues that you'll run into. And as I said before, I like to work with uh, people like Dan's Fish, Aquatic Arts, uh, Redfish, Bluefish, and I've got links and discounts to that stuff, affiliate links down below in the description uh, if you're interested in any of that. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on Fishery.